Welcome to my channel and today on our video we have one of the first Penco boilers that uh, we've ever installed. Uh, this is uh, a rebranded um, Dunkirk I believe and it's definitely one of the smallest I've ever installed. It's like 196 square feet. Um, One thing I do like about this boiler is it does have a nice uh, two and a half inch outlet, uh, which essentially becomes like a little mini steam chest. Um, I would not recommend putting a bushing in there and reducing it. Take advantage of that. Um, it's worked out pretty well, I think. Um, we've got a two and a half by inch and a half uh, bushing in there so the inch and a half plug can come out. We can do a nice skim tapping in the middle of the line there. If, should that become necessary. Um, we chose the boiler largely for the size and that the um, controls are on the right side. Sight glass is deep. Um, if you want to put this on shorter than nine inches, uh, you definitely have to remove the, the uh, this sight glass fitting to be able to get this uh, T on there, by the way. The gas was kind of weird. It came down as inch and a quarter and had a uh, <coughs> gate valve on there. So we've got a uh, proper valve on there. Um, normally we like to have it drop from the ceiling, but this is where it was, so we went with that. Got it on a uh, steel plate uh, to span a fairly uh, dippy floor there. 5-inch outlet draft. The safety relief, not a pressure relief, it's a safety relief. That's the, uh, the proper term. I just learned that today, strangely enough. Um, it, there is the compression union to be able to remove it quickly. The gauge is on this silly stalk, which is on a uh, quarter inch brass nipple, which goes all the way down here. There's your 30 pound gauge. And not only that, it's on um, the internal siphon, which tends to clog as we've discussed in other videos. And of course the heat comes up and just cooks the gauge. So it's there, but I wouldn't pay much attention to that. We did add um, normally the pressure troll, which of course comes fully stroked, and we stroked it all the way back down to its lowest um, setting. Um, we pulled it off of the uh, pigtail and installed this um, quarter inch brass male tee and used the uh, sight glass um, plug, which is normally there, and used it as a little quarter inch plug there and uh, this is so you can take this off and blow in and check to make sure your pigtail is clear for maintenance you can also use this to come off and mount a a, uh, a gauge another gauge should you uh, desire to know what the actual pressure this thing operates at use your schematic um another thing which i may not uh, which is Fairly unique to the um, Dunkirk is the mounting of the um, probe. It's difficult to get to, and I believe they like to use a half inch probe, which is not very common. And then they've got a ground screw there, which is good. And then they've got the uh, uh, wing nut there for the uh, probe. Uh, getting to that and getting that out is a pain. If anybody uh, would like to share tips on getting that out, I'm, I will really appreciate it. Uh, there's your block flues sensor there. I'll go in there and there's a shot of the internals. It's only three section boiler. Small, as I said, it's one of the smallest boilers. What made it interesting was that it's so light when you start cranking on the fittings there. Uh, the boiler wants to dance all over the place. Um, 
speaking of fittings, put this fitting in here and when we filled it up, um, we discovered that, I think you can see by my thumb there, the crack. And there you can see that it's split. Malleable fitting should not be cracking and splitting. Um, I believe that the uh, uh, People's Democratic Republic of, of these guys should uh, uh, exercise a little bit more quality control. That's the way it is. So we've got, again, they have an outlet here of uh, two and a half. Um, the push nipples are two inch, so it's definitely an increase. Uh, we've got a very large bushing there, and uh, we've got our proper drain, uh, purge drain there. Got a regular drain here, um, not, not anything special. Um, We've got it uh, connected with a brass pro press, then a stainless steel, and then a, um, a stainless steel uh, close nipple there. And that's our water feed. We'll go add to that. We pro press that. And there's our VXT flickering. Um, got the maintenance tag here, ready to go mounted with these caddies and there's your backflow preventer and shut off manual bypass and of course there's your um, feed there so this presented some issues we have a first takeoff is the long main and you'll notice uh, we've got a drip here. We've got a, a regular two inch T and a two by three quarter inch, essentially a funnel catching the condensate, which is rolling back. This is a counterflow main, meaning the condensate and the steam are moving in opposite directions. And then we come to the copper. And that's what we had to deal with. Um, that's inch and a half copper. And here's the thing, here's a drip here. This is original, definitely was original. Uh, there was a steel unit here and someone replaced it with copper, in them, but it was a, definitely a drip because there's the support peg. See if you can see it, There's that's definitely uh, dead man stuff there. And there's another one behind the wall here, back in here behind this, this wall. So we've got the drip, and yet we've got a counterflow main, which is kind of weird, and it did bang. Um, so what we did is we cut holes in strategic places and double-checked to make sure there was no low spots. We found one, we fixed it, and water started pouring down at that end, which meant success. So it was counterflow all the way to the end. <clears throat> And there's the end of the main and there's the drip. So what happens is you've got two radiators. There's only four radiators hooked up to this thing now. So what happens is the steam gets there, the radiators heat, and then the condensate comes uh, rolling back and then gets caught by this return. Oh boy. Ah, fiberglass. Gotta hate it. And well, anyway, I think you get the idea. So the the drip actually works. So yay, radiators heat up now quietly and silently. Um, there's enough capacity even with this boiler to add one in the maybe in the middle bedroom or wherever. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so there's the drip going back. We reworked this um, wet returned. This was the plate of the original boiler that we removed. Uh, I think I've got a video of the, um, you might catch a few glimpses. I'll, I'll send a link uh, below of the video of when uh, we worked on it before. Um, it had this uh, 47.2 on there. Uh, the feeder eventually failed, so the customer was uh, 
the resident was actually feeding manually and blowing this down, but eventually the thing rotted out, rusted out, corroded out. So this is a copy of the Golden Rules of Hydronic Heating. It's like a first edition by Dan Hollihan. And what he's done is he's gone back to the old charts from the um, late 19th and early 20th century. And we see when the condensate flows in the same direction as a steam main, you are able to get uh, 336 square feet down it. There's not even a, a chart for um, a counterflow main. This is probably the closest one. And there you see it's um, an inch and a half. You're lucky supposedly to get 81 square feet out of there on a good day. Well, of course, this is uh, partially dripped. So here is the second counterflow main. Uh, obviously, it's original. Uh, as we tie it onto it, we'll go to the end here. I'll show you the end. And it's tied onto two radiators, one in the kitchen and one in the back bedroom. Uh, those have been, looks like they've been replaced uh, some time ago, but they're definitely not original. You can see that's definitely original. And that's got a heck of a slope on it. Very nice. And we've got uh, a couple of... Uh, 45s and able to roll it in. So what happens is the steam rolls out here, the condensate rolls back down and then rolls back in the 45 and sneaks in here and back down the equalizer line to the Harford loop. And then I've got this swing joint here. So if this header expands, it wants to move apart the uh, stress relief joint then will allow this movement to occur. And this is the piping diagram that comes with, and it tells you two and a half inch here, but then it calls out, I guess an inch and a half here. I guess they put a bushing there. It's 17, number 17. Yep, they put a bushing there. Hey. That's fine. They do say recommend to use Teflon tape and pipe dope on all threaded connections. And there's your uh, 1930 seconds per threaded connection. They're calling for a nine inch coming out of here so that you can spin the T on without taking out the uh, um, sight glass fitting. I opted to take out the sight glass fitting as we discussed earlier. So I think that about covers it. Uh, there's the... Um, uh, commissioning test there. I think that about covers it. Um, thanks again for joining uh, me on this rather long rambling shot, but I think we got a good good system here and it should provide years of trouble-free service for the customer. See you on the next one. Stay safe and I really enjoy your questions and comments and uh, keep them coming. Thanks. Bye.